Hi everyone, my name is Marianne. I'm the owner and the counsellor at Marianne Hansen Counselling Service, where I specialise in working with couples and individuals on the areas of depression, stress, anxiety, low self-esteem and relationships. And what I want to talk about in this video is attachment issues in relationships. A number of months ago, I think, I talked about a book which was called Attached. Now, I can't remember if as part of um, a month-long audiobook challenge where I listened to a different audiobook every day for 30 days, I think I covered it in there, but I didn't go into detail individually. But the book Attached is a book which looks at the different attachment styles and how people can be in their relationships depending on their attachment styles. So the three main style attachment styles are anxious, avoidant and secure. And there's lots of, that are joined up with that. So you might be anxious, avoidant, you might be secure um, alongside something else. So I don't want to go into too much detail about the different types. They're the main style. So an anxious person is someone who in their relationship is very needy, very clingy. You know, it's the type of person that was going to send 50 phone calls um, to someone if you don't answer. They're going to sort of break up with you if you don't reply to your texts. They're going to um, say, you know, I need you to be here all the time. Where were you? Some people are going to be thinking this could be also controlling, but it's different than control um, because it's more of the person subconsciously cannot bear the thought of that person not talking to them, not being around them. And it can lead to quite a lot of um, insecurity within the person who's doing the behaviour. They can be accusing the, per the um, their partner of cheating. They can be saying to their partner, you don't love me because you're never around me. But it can also cause quite a lot of pressure on the relationship itself because their partner is always wondering, you know, what more do I need to do? Because it, whatever you do is never enough if someone is quite an anxious attachment style in a relationship. Avoidant is someone who has a fear of commitment. So an avoidant attachment style would be someone who is, they've just got a fear of attachment so their way of dealing with that is to have multiple partners. It's about not saying, I love you. If someone tells them that they love them, then that scares a person with an avoidant attachment style. So if they hear someone getting too close to them, then they're gonna do something to sabotage it. They're gonna purposely you know, make it clear that they're not interested in anything serious. But the key thing with that is the person with an avoidant attachment style actually does want commitment but they're fearful of it, so they sabotage it. And that's the whole thing with all of these attachment styles. The person really is seeking love, they want um, a love, um, a long-lasting relationship, but they're not able to do it because of issues from childhood and that sort of thing. So instead, they're using like methods that are doing the complete opposite to what they want. So someone with attachment issues in a relationship has the inability to maintain relationships. They, someone with an anxious or avoidant attachment style has the increased need to be wanted. So even with the avoidant attachment style, who's going out there having multiple partners, um, you know, doesn't ever say I love you or say anything that would lead you to fall in love with them. Deep down they do crave and want a long lasting relationship, which is why they're still going out there and they're um, spending time getting into relationships with lots of people but they're also choosing people who they know sometimes and it's not gonna ever end up being a good relationship anyway. So you know when someone has, they choose people who they know is not ready for a relationship or they choose someone who has blatantly said, I don't want a serious relationship. So they know that that person is gonna end it anyway or they sabotage it themselves. So an avoidant person is someone that is probably out of the free because the anxious person can probably um, rein that in a little bit. They can sort of sit back and think, do you know what, realistically, logically, the person is with me because they want to be. I don't have to keep checking all their pictures on social media. I don't have to keep phoning them. The avoidant, I think they probably need a bit more help because they're probably not even aware of why they're doing what they do. There's an element of resistance to receiving love as well. So in both of these situations with attachment disorders, there's an element of you're resistant to it. So you know what you want, you want love, 
but you're resisting love at the same time. And that's why it can be very confusing if you're dating someone who has like an attachment disorder, because one minute they're going to be pouring it all on, they're going to be giving you flowers, they're going to be telling you, I can't bear, you know, being away from you, you're my universe, you're everything to me. And then the next day they're going to be very, um, just avoiding communication, they're going to be very um, hard to read, hard to know what's happening, no affection and that sort of thing. And that's because a lot of times they're fighting with their attachment disorder. So someone who is, has got a secure attachment means that they're good at communicating their needs and what they want. They're good at making someone feel secure in the relationship. They're reliable and they're committed, but also if the relationship does end, which you know relationships end, the person with a secure attachment isn't going to blame themselves. There is, they're not going to say to themselves, I'm worthless or the reason this relationship ended is because I'm a bad person and I'm never going to go into another relationship again. They're just going to, they are very rational. So they'll be able to say, do you know what? Sometimes relationships don't work out. I'm going to move on to the next one. I'm going to work on myself. I'm going to keep it moving. You know, they're not going to fall to pieces because the relationship has ended because they know deep down that that's a possibility and they're secure within themselves. That's the main thing. So people with attachment disorders can also have difficulty feeling safe. So no matter what the person does, as I've said, if you have an, an attachment disorder, because it comes from, it's rooted in childhood, this is just a theory that if you've not had a secure attachment for the first five years, from naught to five years old, then if that's disrupted, whether it's through the loss of a parent, whether it's through divorce, whether it's through put, being put into foster care, whether it's through having parents but they're not available to you emotionally, so maybe they've got addictions, maybe there's mental health issues. What it does is it make, creates a blueprint for how you feel relationships should be. So if you don't work through that as an adult, then you end up either replaying the same type of relationships because you think that's what I've seen, that's what I've heard, or there's like a need or, or something missing. So say the child who's been abandoned by a parent, when they go into their relationship, they become an anxious attachment style because they they become clingy because they think you're gonna leave because they've been abandoned in their childhood. It's not as simple as that. It's a lot more complicated, but that's at the gist of it. So the key thing really is to seek therapy so that you can work through the issues. That's one of the things. We always have to look at things on the here and now, so what's going on in the present, but also what's at the root of it. So with attachment issues, this is one of, definitely one of the things where you can't just focus on what's going on in your current relationship. You also have to look at where's this um, feeling of needing to be clingy? Where's that coming from? Where's this feeling of um, never settling with anyone in any relationship, you know, fear of commitment. So you do that in therapy. The other thing to do is to put 100% effort into every relationship that you have because you're in control of that. If you were to make a decision that no matter what the other person is doing or no matter what my friends think or my family think or no matter about how I'm feeling, I'm going to give this 100%. Then what you're doing is you're taking control back. You're saying, you know, maybe I've not um, had the role models that I needed when I was like younger that have shown me what a good relationship looks like. But I'm taking responsibility here. I'm going to be the one that doesn't continuously harass my partner until they say they're going to stay in and not go out. I'm not going to be the one that has multiple partners and then when someone does start to fall for me, then sabotage it. You know, you can decide that. And the third thing is to just give things a chance, you know, say to yourself that relationships take hard work, but also relationships are not perfect. So if you're someone that has got attachment issues and you're aware of that, then give, you know, give it a chance. I think what people do sometimes, they'll give up on themselves and they'll say, do you know what, no matter what relationship I get into, it's not gonna work because my parents' relationship didn't work or because no one's ever taught me how to have a good relationship or because every relationship I enter into, it ends up going wrong or because there's something wrong with me, so what's the point? Or I've got trust issues, so I'm never gonna trust anyone anyway. But if you just give up on, the, on relationships as a whole, it means you're not giving yourself a chance, you're not giving anyone else a chance, 
and there is always hope. You can also do a lot of research. You can find out more about attachment styles, attachment issues. It's a very complex subject. There are books out there, including the book I've mentioned, which is called Attached. There's lots of information that you can find online. You can research more into the different attachment styles, especially if you're aware that one of them suits you. And I'll probably make another video. I might even look at each attachment style separately to give you more information. But if you found this video useful, feel free to share it. Feel free to drop your comments. And also feel free to subscribe to my channel if you enjoy watching these videos. Thanks for watching everyone. See you soon.